One of the exciting developments here at Radial Engines Limited uh, the past few years has been the Jacobs fuel injection system. For about three years we've worked on development of a fuel injection system for the Jacobs R755A2 and the R755B2 engine. And in uh, November and December of 2004 we were granted three different STCs uh, for this system. Uh, one thing that, uh, that some people might ask is why would we want to fuel inject uh, an antique radial engine? Uh, it, the, haven't the carburetors done an admirable job all these years? Why would we want to, uh, to mess with that? And I think the answer is because we saw such significant improvements uh, during the, the testing phase. Um, one of the problems with any radial engine actually with any engine, but, uh, but it's especially uh, noticeable with the radial engines, is that the induction system where the, uh, the fuel-air mixture comes in and then is distributed through to the various cylinders uh, is unequal about how it distributes that fuel-air mixture. Anytime the engine's running, uh, the cylinders are, are pulling mixture into them, just the, the vacuum uh, that is going on inside the cylinder during uh, the intake stroke is, is drawing mixture in. But there's also a ram effect. And as you'll notice, the ram effect, as, as the air flows through here, it has to make a 180 degree turn before it's able to get into the number four cylinder. Whereas with the number two cylinder, the air gets much more of a ram effect. On a typical carburetor installation, if we, if we put a 7 point EGT uh, on the engine, we'll find a 200 degree difference between the, the hottest and coolest EGT reading. And the EGTs peak at radically different times as you lean the engine. So what the fuel injection does, or one of the things that the fuel injection does, is it allows us to tailor the amount of fuel going into each cylinder to match the airflow that the somewhat inefficient design of, of the radial engine uh, induction system will allow. So let me point out the, the various components here. What we have here is our fuel injection servo. Um, it is a Bendix unit and uh, it has a, an upper and a lower uh, adapter plate that, uh, that we'll look at in a little more detail in a minute. We have the injector lines, we have the um, flow divider, which again is a, a Bendix uh, part. It's an eight cylinder flow divider that has one port plug. And then we've modified our intake pipes so that each one has a fuel injection nozzle that feeds into it. Um, let's look at these a little bit closer. All right, here we have our, our flow divider, and into the flow divider we have fuel coming from the servo. Uh, there's, there's no fuel actually in the intake pipe until it gets to this point. All the intake pipe is flowing is air, and then the, the uh, servo is metering fuel to the flow divider. The flow divider is dividing it up, and then each nozzle is tailored to the cylinder airflow um, number one through seven. The nozzles that we're using are the, uh, are the GAMI nozzle and uh, they have their uh, proprietary patented design which allows us to balance each of the, um, of the cylinder air flows to the fuel flow. Here again is the, uh, uh, the fuel controller or the servo. Uh, you'll notice the, the upper adapter, the lower adapter. These have the same, the same bolt pattern as the uh, carburetor. So once the, the servo is bolted in here, there's no modification necessary to the air box. As far as the airframe is concerned, it still has a carburetor in it. You'll notice that, uh, that the mixture, or the uh, throttle, and the mixture controls are on the same side as the carburetor, so there's not a lot of uh, modification necessary to, um, uh, to bolt this thing up. So what really are the advantages to having a fuel-injected engine? Uh, one thing that we've seen immediately is an increase in power production by each cylinder. Again, when we're, when we're balancing the uh, fuel flow to match the airflow of the cylinder, 
Now when we lean the engine, we're leaning all the cylinders together, so we no longer have cold cylinders that are lagging behind and not producing the horsepower that the, uh, the cylinders that have been properly leaned. Now everything is being leaned together. So suddenly the engine begins to produce the potential horsepower that, um, that it never could produce with a carburetor. Um, the second thing that we've noticed is a tremendous smoothness in the engine. Uh, it still sounds like a radial, but it feels like a turbine. It, uh, it makes a tremendous difference um, in, uh, in smoothness. Uh, another thing that we've noticed is uh, the specific fuel consumption has gone down. Uh, most of the people that are operating this engine report anywhere from a, a one and a half to two gallon per hour fuel savings with the fuel injection. Now, why does it do that? It's because it's no longer just throwing fuel at those rich cylinders. Now all the cylinders have, can be leaned together and, um, and so we don't have rich cylinders anymore. Um, another thing that we have noticed is that it is really helping with the deposits that um, have traditionally built up on the valves and seats uh, on, in the Jacobs engine. Uh, that, and that issue was probably the one that the FAA was the most excited about in this project was that um, again not, not having coal cylinders that are lagging behind it no longer has the tendency to build up the carbon deposits that it did in the past and uh, when we've torn these engines down they're very very clean inside and um, so it, um, it really provides some advantage. Uh, it, it is just a win-win-win situation as far as performance and uh, longevity of the engine is concerned. Initially we obtained uh, approvals for the uh, engine itself, for the R755A2, the R755B2, and uh, the first airframe approval was for installing the fuel injected engines on the Cessna 195. Uh, that approval was followed um, two months later by the approval to install those uh, fuel injected engines on the, um, the Waco YMF5. Uh, we now, uh, as of this taping, have um, an application in to begin to fuel inject the L6MB 330 horse Jacobs engine. We have several customers that are very interested in, uh, in purchasing those units. Uh, our, our plan after uh, that is, uh, after we're finished with the L6, is to uh, proceed ahead with some of the other uh, small radial engines. The uh, Lycoming R680s could certainly use um, fuel injection. They're, um, they're horrible uh, in their um, uh, imbalance cylinder to cylinder with the, uh, with the Lycomings. Uh, the 220 Continental would benefit from it. Uh, the 220 Continental was actually fuel injected back in 1940. Uh, I've never seen one of the engines, but we have uh, advertising literature that tells us that, uh, that Continental actually did fuel inject that engine um, in 1940. Well, let's take this engine out and put it on our dynamometer and uh, let's run it a little bit with the, uh, with the fuel injection on it. 